If you keep heading north of Toowoomba along the New England Highway, you'll hit the Crows Nest Shire, just on the crest of the Great Dividing Range. Now they tell me there's plenty of small townships in the Shire, so we might just stop along the way as we go. The Crows Nest Shire covers over 1,600 square kilometres on the northeastern side of the Darling Downs, about 30 minutes north of Toowoomba and approximately two hours west of Brisbane. There's a half a dozen towns within the Shire and the first one you pass through when heading north is Highfields. From there, just follow the signs. To the Spring Bluff Railway Station where not only will you be able to toast to over 100 years of railway history, you'll also wander through some of its award-winning gardens. In 1864, construction commenced on a railway line between Ipswich and Toowoomba. The final stage leading to the Spring Bluff station was completed in 1867. The station was operational for 125 years, but in 1992 was decommissioned. The line is still used by freight trains and you'll still see the occasional steam train passing by on special occasions. Over the many years of the station's existence, railway staff have been involved in planting and maintaining these beautiful gardens and it's paid off, with Spring Bluff Railway winning more than its fair share of prizes in Toowoomba's prestigious Carnival of Flowers gardening competitions. The beautiful scenery and history is what gives the Crows Nest Shire its appeal, and continuing north through the town of Highfields, the next stop is Kabbalah. And of course, in the main street of Kabbalah, as in most towns, you'll find the local pub, and locals have been finding this one, the Farmer's Arms Hotel, since 1863, making it the oldest surviving licence holder in Queensland. Leaving the Farmer's Arms and continuing north, you'll get to the town of Crow's Nest, the commercial heart of the Shire. Now, the first question I asked myself when I got here was, why do they call it Crow's Nest? It only takes a trip to the local town park to find out that Aboriginal Jimmy Crow, who used to live in a hollowed out tree just like that one, was a bit of a legend when it came to giving directions to travellers passing through and so they named the place after him. And if you're an antique lover, well then you can't go past the biggest building in town. Salt's Antique Centre covers about half an acre and if you look hard enough through these weird and wonderful antiques, well then you're sure to find a bargain. The dog's not for sale. CD player. And it's not just the bric-a-brac from the Crow's Nest area that holds a bit of history. In 1902, this old tin shed was the location for a one-man auctioneering business. That man, Ray White. It's hard to believe that these modest beginnings in the small town of Crow's Nest with a starting point for one of the biggest real estate businesses throughout Australia and New Zealand. Even though this is all I could squeeze in in one day, Crow's Nest Shire still has a truckload more things to see and do. There's an abundance of national parks and reserves to visit, as well as everything we've seen today. For any advice regarding a drive out to Crow's Nest, contact the Shire Council office and they'd be only too happy to help out. On Wednesday night at the Brisbane Convention Centre, the 1998 Brisbane Tourism Awards were held. And I'm proud to say that the Great South East was the winner in the media category for its commitment to promoting the local tourist industry. So, thanks everyone for your support. Crow's Nest is really only a stone's throw away from Toowoomba, and as I found out today, there's plenty to see along the way. Well, that's it for another show. I'm heading back to Brizzy. I look forward to your company next Sunday at 5.30 when again we go out and about in the great southeast.